Hi, thank you for joining me. I'm Professor Amy Keeley. Welcome to Being Paleo. Um, today is Motivational Day, so I'm doing these motivationals, as I've mentioned in the past um, videos that I've recorded. They're meant to be kind of short because I want to be able to focus on what I see, our ancient wisdom that's been passed down to us that we have forgotten what it means um, or how we can apply it to our lives. So. You know, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you also watch to the end because I am giving away um, not just um, being paleo gear because I want my logo to mean something. I want it to be a talisman that as you're starting to unpack yourself from this modern world and start to live more like ancient paleolithic people did, that you have a reminder that says, oh yeah, that's right. I got to put that down. Um, so that's really the goal behind um, the giveaways of products and, and merchandise that we have but then also i'm adding in my consultation i am an award-winning marketer and work for a lot of fortune 500 companies and if you watch my hunter hennessy channel um, i am going to be giving away um you know consults so that if you have business questions about even you know getting an organic eco friendly line going i can you know at least give you some advice there as well so i'm giving those away at the very end if you sign up uh, but today's motivational is about um um it's Basically, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. So this has so much meaning for me as a college professor, because there is nothing I have found that is more psychologically damaging, if you will, to know that you're sitting in class and you're taking all of this wisdom that you have learned, or at least me, you know, I mean, I know that professors come from, you know, a variety of different backgrounds, but I'm an award-winning marketer. That means that I have won the American Marketing Association Award working for companies like Time Warner. And that means that it is the Oscars that you can win in the, in the marketing industry. That means I have won all the way at the top. And I have learned to talk about that, but for years I never told anybody about having won it. And I say that now that I'm trying to get out this message of I'm really trying to help you people <laughs> um, with taking my leadership skills and and, and helping people get to that next level in their lives because they are struggling to figure out how to do that and carrying people on my back who need that help as I have been just recently in a health advocate going through a profoundly broken system, but getting him to where he needed to be in less than three months, which he'd been trying for 10 years to do. Um, so when I say that you can't, you, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. So what does that mean? Um, so in its most basic sense, I mean, there's times where you can lead a horse to water because you know that you have a very long journey to go. Let's say you've decided you're going to go horseback riding for 30 miles. And let's just say the horse was fed and watered when it left the barn and it's been a pretty mild day, so it's not really that thirsty. I mean, that you can lead it to a stream, but if it doesn't want to drink, it's not going to drink. You can hold its head down, you can pull the reins down. It doesn't want to drink and you can't make it drink so but you know that you're going to be going let's say another 18 miles on this horse and at some point you know you know the weather will change or you know that just 18 miles is going to be a long distance and that it's going to want to have water and this is the only water source for 18 miles but if that horse is not thirsty enough it will not drink and the answer is, is that you're its pack leader. If you're telling it it should drink, then it should listen on some levels because it doesn't know where it's going. You know, you, that's you as the leader saying, hey, listen, I'm trying to take care of you, but if you're not listening to me. Now, I say that judiciously because I look at today's politics and I'm apolitical, I'm an independent, and I hate both sides. And I can see the flaws in both sides because I'm a marketer and I see how they don't have your best interests in mind. They just want you to vote for them. If they had your best interests in mind, then they would make sure that the laws as they are written were to protect you were upheld. But that doesn't always happen. Um, so, you know, you have to be judicious at that leader that you select. Um, and he has to earn your trust. So the same thing with the horse. If you've had this horse for a long period of time and he trusts you that when he should trust that when he, you said, take a drink, take a drink. So equating that to my college students, I am literally like teaching my guts out because this is how I learn by watching and listening, um, nonverbal and verbal communication. And I'm sure that is exactly how our ancients 
um, learn because they had a lot of apprenticeships where that's what you did, right? As a blacksmith's apprentice, you watched what they did every day. Um, all of their techniques, all of their quick tips, all of their, you know, the way that they would economize their time, you know, where you could do it and it would take you decades to learn that craft on your own if you ever learned it. Well, learning it with a, a master, you're going to learn faster, but you're still going to have to hone your craft. Um, so, you know, you can see it with apprenticeships. So apprenticeships evolve from someplace and it, you can, I bet, you know, if I you go back to Paleolithic peoples and realize that they were doing apprenticeships back then, they were passing their knowledge down to their children and how to basket weave, how to find safe shelter, um, which beads, uh, um, bees, um, bee, <laughs> berries and, and, and bees, for example, were poisonous. I mean, I just learned the difference between you know, a honeybee and a yellow jacket and a wasp. Uh, some of them are not interested in, in stinging you and some of them are, and yet most people react all, you know, to them all the time. So, um, you know, you, you're passing down knowledge. So I look at leading a horse to drink well, you can't make it drink is I would watch my students just take my class to get a see or better thinking that they were focusing on I want that degree I want to come out with a a really you know you know a great job and some of them have been very good at taking the skills they've been taught by career services and parlaying that into jobs but that's also why I believe anxiety and depression is so high is because when they actually get on the job and the performance metrics are so outrageous because my demographic created really you know we're really hard workers they are not interested in working that hard or they don't have the skill base to be able to do what we've learned along the way that they think they've been taught well when you learn something in theory without having its practical application, you will almost always fail or you will struggle at learning the practical application. I've talked to people who've taken courses at the colleges that I, I, I teach at, who when I asked them, did you, you know, how did that help you? Say like marketer, I ask everything, right? So how did that help you in the, in the business world? I've been told by multiple people, I don't, I'm not using anything that I learned in school. And I bet you, if you're watching and you're honest with yourself, when you got into this after coming out of college, you struggled a bit. Why? Because there's a delta gap between what college is teaching in theory from people who've never worked in business and people who actually work in business and what your expectations are. Plus, you know, the economy's moving. Um, business moves constantly. So what they're teaching you may already be outdated. You hope that they stay up to date, um, but that may not always happen. So with knowledge, you know, I, I try to impart the knowledge that I can you know, and when I'm in one-on-one -on -one conversations with people, I mean, I think I'm up to 23 books. People tell me I have to write because my knowledge base is so diverse um, that I realized that when people led me to water or when I led myself to water, I filled up <laughs> whether I was thirsty or not, knowing that I didn't know where I was going to go. Um, so I made myself a commodity that I can go into any industry. I can do any job that anybody gives me to because that's, I'm a commodity now, I can do that. But unfortunately, businesses don't realize that people with a very diverse background are actually a benefit to them. They see that as a threat because, oh, well, see, she doesn't have a degree, you know, just hasn't followed marketing altogether, or she hasn't stayed in this industry altogether. Well, if you travel to different businesses and in different industries, you learn something from them that you can bring back to the industries that you previously worked in, um, or they're solving different problems back then. So even employers are looking today, have gotten into this rut of only trying to find people, let's say, who've got marketing, all the, you know, marketing titles all the way through without realizing that sometimes working in operations adds so much more value to you as a marketer because then you become like me, which is a supply chain marketer. I understand supply chain and I'm the marketing overlay over business. I'm a business marketer. So when you, you know, you can see it even with employers where you think that, you know, you're leading them by your resume saying, here's all of this diversity, but you can't make them drink and you can't make them hire you. Um, so it, it speaks to a stubbornness. Um, you know, again, you can't, you, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. It's, it, 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 it speaks to a stubbornness and an arrogance that exists in our society today. And I just recently, when I was taking the health advocate, you know, I was a health advocate, I was taking 
um, Nick to where he's going right now in a temporary stay. <clears throat> and um, I said, so how did you enjoy the other place? I said, I really liked it. I thought it was more of a program that you needed. And he goes, yeah, there is old people. He watched my other video on tough love. I gave him some tough love. I said, those old people know more than you know. And besides the fact you are broken and in a substance abuse program. So you have no business telling anybody or looking down on anybody. You should be grateful that they would even spend the time talking to you. Because honestly, if you want to even compare yourself to my education, you don't even rank if you want to be that arrogant. Let me pull the, the, the rank card on you. So maybe at this new place, if you find older people, you won't disrespect them so much and you will start to listen to them because they are sharing ancient knowledge with you that you're just too dumb to see. And I hate to use words like that, but sometimes what I found as an English major is that you have to use words that are going to shock the system. And when I want to be heard and someone's not listening to me, um, I will use language to shock the system so that you wake up because most of this life today, people are living in an absolute daze or they're so selfish that they're in their own heads thinking about them, 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 them. That they're not even paying attention to the world around them. And I will use language to shake someone up so that they listen. And I just on my Hunter Hennessy did a video on active listening of nonverbal and verbal communication. So you should go watch that. I'll put the link below, but you should watch that too. Um, but again, you know, yourself. So this, this message, especially as you're going through this idea of being paleo, if you're joining me on this journey of losing weight, living healthier, extracting myself out of this modern world where I think I got to buy everything brand new, um, is to open your mind to hearing more information, finding that person that you learn to trust. And hopefully you'll start to see me as your trusted advisor that when I say drink, drink, <laughs> You make it ask questions. Don't just do it blindly. Make sure that you understand why someone's telling you to drink. You should ask questions like, well, are we going for a long walk or will I be able to drink something in the future? Those are smart questions that you would ask if someone said, hey, take a drink now. But most people go, yeah, I'm not thirsty. I'm not drinking. I don't want anything to drink. You see the knowledge gap? So asking questions can help you understand why someone is, is taking you, you know, like a horse leading you somewhere to make you drink. But most people don't do that today and they trust the wrong people. And they, they sometimes will listen to things that they have been told are a value, but they're not a value to their lives. You know, there's certain communities that are still struggling because politicians have promised them things for a hundred years, a hundred years and they still believe them. And at some point, they what these politicians have we realized, oh, if I lead them to water, I can make them drink. They'll still vote for me. So again, learning how to unpack this life if you're not happy with it and you wanna live healthier and more fulfilled is going out and trying to find true pack leaders that have tested that time, that will be there for you when, they, when you need them, that you're seeing a direct result of benefiting you from actions they take, not society in general, because society has different needs than you. So in that case, you worry about yourself, you worry about your society, but at the end of the day, if you're not healthy and you're not strong, you can't take care of other people. So putting laws in place aren't gonna help anybody. Um, in fact, we live in an over-restrictive lifestyle. If you look at from what ancient people used to live. There were rules back in ancient society, but it wasn't like, hey, do this and hey, do that. And so that your, your life is managed inside your house and outside your house. It's one thing to know the rules and to follow the rules, but we now have a society that is built on people who break the rules. So for that minority out there, people who break the rules, we have now ru restrictive rules that in a free society, we're not living free anymore. So again, listen is when I listen here, you know, um, you can lead a, ho a horse to um, water, but you can't make a drink. To me, that's all about listening and being an active listener and asking questions. 
because if you have these people in your life and they're leading you to water, water, that is your path leader. And if they say, take a drink, take a drink or ask questions so that you understand why they're telling you that and then take a drink. <laughs> um, so again, I want to be that pack leader for my tribe and my clan um, so I can help um, share my ancient knowledge, share my determinations, share the power and strength that I have inside of me, um, which I've been called like the ever ready bunny. Like it's, people have told me I would power the city of Detroit because I just have so much energy. I only sleep two to four hours a night anyway um, and wake up rested. That's what my Fitbit has helped me understand with my Fitbit has helped me understand about my sleep patterns that I am going into REM sleep, even though I'm sleeping less. Um, and I want to be able to do something good with that. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel and that you, you know, click on the bell so that you can get my latest updates as they come out and that you make sure you enter in the drawing on my main web webpage. It's on the very bottom. There's a little button that says, you know, it has an arrow on it. You'll click on that and that'll take you to the prize page where you can enter to win either, you know, some being paleo merchandise and or some co consultation time with me. And then also I am on Patreon. I don't mention it that often, but you can visit on Patreon. Um, and I do do shout outs as I'm building my channel. It's building quite quickly. And I'm really pleased about that. So um, hopefully I'm getting that message out to more people. But in the end, just make sure that you're having a great day, applying every little step every day, making sure you're repeating your routine and building really healthy routines and have a great day being paleo.